Islam fixes a lot of the problems that men are currently facing. Islam yeah. fixes all of them. I think it's the last religion on the planet. So if it's the last true religion on the planet, then it has to be the correct one. And I'm not a Muslim, but if I had to bet on one religion as if I were betting on the stock market for the future, you have to bet on Islam. Because Muslims are intolerant. And I'm not saying that disrespectfully, because if you're tolerant of everything, then you stand for nothing. I can walk through London with a t-shirt saying Jesus is gay and nothing will happen to me. If I did the same thing with the Islamic prophet, I'd be dead before I got to the end of the street. Boom. That's how much they believe and respect. And I respect people who stick up for what they believe in. And I've been all around the world. Some of the best countries in the world today are the first world Muslim nations. Yeah. You can go to Qatar. You can fall asleep with a million dollars on your lap in the middle of the street. Nothing's going to happen. Saudi Arabia as you well. You can go to Saudi. Nothing will happen to you. You can go to Dubai, UAE. Nothing's going to happen They leave their cars parked with the, with the keys, keys inside. inside. It's so safe. Women, everyone's married. Every woman obeys her husband. Every single woman has four or five, six kids, big families, all the things we're talking about, all the problems we have here, right? They've got none of that, none of it because of Islam. Women have big families. Women are exceptionally happy to do so. Society is functioning. Their population is growing because in most Western countries, the population is declining. So we have population problems in the West. They have none of the population problems. Society starts at the smallest possible group. You have families and families make a street and that street makes a village and that village makes a town. That town makes a city and that city makes a country. So if it's broken at the very fundamental level, if it's family level is broken, then it's broken the whole way up. Yep, yep. And that's what's happened in the West. And the first world Islamic countries have none of those problems. So if you're going to talk about a belief system that fixes issues, you need to go to Islam. Even though I wouldn't identify as Muslim, I have absolute respect for the ideology, yeah. respect for the mentality, respect for the warrior aspect of it. I know you, you're interested in Islam. Yep. Um, so you don't have to accept this, but this is a choice. I will accept it. English friend. translation of the Quran. So if you want to... Amazing. Seek more knowledge. Thank you very much, bro. I appreciate that very, very much. I'm always out for knowledge, my friend. Thank you very, very much. Know. My invitation to anybody is put your preconceived notions aside. Take what you may have heard about Islam, what you may have thought about it from your own faith traditions point of view. Put all of that aside. Read the Quran neutrally and get a first, an unbiased impression. I'm just going to read this for myself with no other influences as much as possible. At the end of the day, human beings are going to have some bias or the other, but as much as I can consciously be disconnected from bias and give it a shot and read it, I think that that would be my invitation to anybody. And I would think it's really difficult to not walk away truly being moved by what you're, what you're being exposed to, truly being hit by what you're exposed to. I've yet to read the Quran, but it's certainly something I'm going to do. I'm going to read it without a preconceived notion, without a preconceived idea. And I think that's the best way to do things, because you're right, there's too much bias in the world. This is all haram. <laughs> this is haram, bro. Even, this is haram. Wait, are you Muslim? Let me I am Muslim, yeah. Welcome to the new Muslim tape. I was born in a Christian country. I was raised as a Christian. And I've always been very respectful of Islam. And it's become more and more obvious to me and, and more and more pertinent that Islam is the last religion on the planet. I feel like there's no other religion. People say to me, why did you convert? I said, I don't really feel it as a conversion. It's almost like I knew God was real and now I've become religious. And also Islam very closely reflects my personal beliefs. Through my personal life, I've yeah. learned that if you don't have standards and you're not a strong person who's prepared to defend his ideas, you'll be crushed. God to me is something to be feared. God to me is someone that people are afraid to mock. God to me is someone that you have to go out of your way to prove something to. God to me has red lines. Like, God to me, 
re represents the Islamic faith. The Christian God to me, I don't see God. To me, it was it was the only logical choice wow. in the end. There was a time when I was atheistic. Mm. And the reason I am now so absolutely certain that God is real is because yeah. I've seen evil. I've seen shaitan. I've seen it. When you see enough evil, you realize that there must be an equal and opposite force. And there are people out there in the world today doing the work of the devil, genuine demons who are trying to destroy the baseline morality that's inside of all of us. We're all born with some kind of morality and they're trying to destroy it. And this is why perhaps I, f I found God the way I did because mm. I understood all these things mm. first and then I saw the Quran and it confirmed so many things for me, you know? Like even the conversations I've been having so far, so many things have been confirmed and it's amazing the knowledge that's inside of it, which is so applicable today yeah, yeah. for, for, for an old book, right? You know, it's supposed to be old, but it seems yeah. so so timeless. But it's truly amazing. I think when you have negative experiences, and I'm talking about truly negative experiences, I've had a few where you come close to losing your life, or you meet other people who come close to losing their lives. Nobody's an atheist at the end, my friend. Atheists stop being atheists quickly when the game gets real. So all of us innately understand in God. The most atheist man alive will pray if he really needs help. And also, if we're gonna talk about happiness, we're here to be happy and we're here to enjoy ourselves, it's through God that you're happy and enjoy yourself. Yeah. It's not through that black hole of hedonism. It's not through endless <laughs> and supercars and, and, and booze. And it's not those things. You can find any man who goes down that hole and tell me, are they happy? The answer is no. Who's the man who's happiest? The man who's praying. If you remove God from society completely, if you click your fingers and he's gone, and if you completely remove religion from earth, you'll see the devil appear pretty quickly. You'll, you'll see mass breakdown of society. Yeah. You'll see crime. You'll see rape. You'll see murder. You'll see theft. And then you'll understand that God is a real force. I just truly respect and understand that God is real. And yeah. I truly respect and understand that with my own eyes, what I've observed, the truest way to show respect to God is through Islam.